excited to be back in person. We had a great virtual conference last year, but nothing beats being here and exchanging ideas and learning from each other and hearing beautiful music and, and doing it safely. So along those lines, you know, a lot of us are here for the first time out of you know our own little COVID bubbles and so respect each other's COVID safety, comfort zone, you know, we all have different ones, so maybe that's just something to think about. But we do encourage you please network, please talk to each other after sessions. We have a wonderful uh, social activity, safe social activity plan for tomorrow night in Dockery Farms, which is the birthplace of the blues. So it's it's a wonderful event and this free, there'll be food trucks there, it's for school groups, so more information is in your program. Lots of wonderful sessions. We hope you attend. And students, I know that maybe some of you are required to attend this. I'll tell you, I was a student in CMS. I got my first job directly because of my involvement in CMS. It has led to so many opportunities. I got my dissertation topic because of the CMS conference. CMS is really good for you. You may not know that now, but trust me, it is an organization that will really help you in your professional career. So we do encourage all students to join us and continue to participate in conferences. Thank you for being here. And let's have a wonderful conference and let's really enjoy this time with each other because I know that there's so many things, our life is so busy. Let's just really try to be present in this moment and just enjoy it and enjoy being with other people because we've waited so long for this. And, uh, Let's just have a wonderful moment. So I'm here working the registration table, welcoming people to the conference. These are some of the glorious present duties. We had our first rehearsal with the singer and it went well, but we still have some ensemble things to work on. So we have another one tomorrow. And we also have a concert tonight and some sessions and still going on. So it's a wonderful first day of the conference. And... years now. 
and I started as a music department chair. And my journey was an internal hire. I walked into work one day, and the former chair walked into my office and said, hey, I just want to let you know I came from the Groves office. I said, okay, uh, I quit today. What? I quit today, and she's probably going to call you tomorrow. Put your heads up. <laughs> okay, great, second week of class in January. So I was certainly an internal hire with about zero time to prepare. Um, so between then and now, I've held several different administrative positions, including Associate Dean, dean of Colleges of Arts, as well as Education, um, and then my current role. Um, so we're excited to talk about uh, leadership succession planning, and just a quick, quick pulse of the room. How many folks here are currently serving as a department chair, or director of something, or a coordinator? Awesome, awesome. How many folks have served in that type of role at some point? Excellent. And how many folks are like, I think I might want to do that, but I'm, you know, I'm not there? Cool, awesome. And how many of you are like, oh my gosh, no. <laughs> I'm going to ask. Okay, great. Cool. Uh, you know, uh, it's actually not equal for all, all four of those things. So, so that's, that's interesting, and that's great. But um, there are challenges. And it doesn't matter if we transition from within our department, within our university, or from outside. So transitioning from within, um, you already know everybody. That's a great thing. From within, you already know everybody. It's a really bad thing. Absolutely, because at times, your view of people will change, their view of you will change as well. And how will that look? Well, a couple things. You suddenly have moved from college to the administrator, right? And you're like, wow, did I wake up this morning and did I, like, yeah, I wore deodorant, um, but well, why are you treating me differently? Well, you're in a different role. So adapting, really, to what that is and, and knowing that that's, okay, that's just part of the transition. Uh, but uh, really, I think you have some, some good stories. Sure. So I was an external hire, as I said, and I should also, everybody you guys cared about the whole non tenure thing. I have tenure, associate, I'm full professor, I've been there for several years. Ten years in, I'm still here, guys. It's okay. You, could, you know, this is, this is totally doable. It needs to give anyone nightmares right away. But as an external hire, you are kind of in a unique situation that you have a totally outside perspective. You're coming in, you don't know anybody. And so, in a way, this is great because you don't have any alliances, any friendships, any allegiances, any musical collaborations, you know, that, that are kind of changing because of your new role. You, everybody's equal because people don't know them. But the, the, the one difficult thing about it is that your faculty actually know more about your institution than you do because you literally just stepped in, right? So there's a lot of processes and things like this, which kind of some funny moments where they might know and you don't know just by the virtue of you you being used to the role. Now, my, um, my hiring process was, I was a chair of a brand new music department. It used to be the Department of Music and Theater, and the predecessor was a theater person. So when um, they split off and they hired me, he just sort of laughed and said, you know, do, do what you need to do, I'll stay out of your way, and he really did. But uh, I guess the flip side of that is I really had no predecessor. I had no one to go to because no one in my department knew the job and did, you know, didn't know what it all entailed, and the person just kind of let me be. And so I was kind of, you know, sink or swim, kind of a mode, just kind of being thrown in. Um, and, but in a way it was also good, because I had to get to know everyone. And we had a unique situation where I was just hired, and we were moving our music department from one building to another, to our actual building that was renovated for some years, so we were moving up in. And as renovations go, everything was running behind, so it was supposed to be done before I got there, and it did not actually happen until October, November, we had a grand opening November 2nd. So we were moving literally physical objects <laughs> from one building to another and having things delivered and purchasing things all the way up to and after the grand opening. For the grand opening, we had to stage things. I had students giving tours. I had to show the building to the students giving the tour the next day, the day before, because I really did not know the building. So it was just kind of a funny story, but because of that, I got to know everybody on campus. I had everybody's cell phone number in my phone, from uh, the person who was a mover, moving the boxes, to the vice president for finance. Uh, 
because everything that has to be done, you know, I just had to kind of figure out how to do and where to go. And um, one funny story, at one point, uh, when I came to the building, I realized, well, hey, this building has no trash can. You know, where do we get trash cans? And I said, well, we, you know, no one pays for the trash cans. So the vice president for finance paid for our trash cans, and then me and my administrative assistant went to Lowe's, and we picked up every single trash can and went next to home and bought it and brought it over. And I just, I remember sitting in meetings with the chairs, and they would ask the dean, oh, well, I need, you know, we need this, where do you go? And I'd be like, why would you even ask that question? This is where you go. This is the person's phone number. You know, I had all the answers, because I really had to figure out how to get to know everybody really fast because I didn't have that prior relationship of um, not knowing how these things work. I just so I'm here with Michelle Keek and we did a leadership succession session today where we talked about our experiences and the such and how do we feel about it? It was an awesome session with really great questions and people there attending and they're so excited about leadership. We can't wait to see where they go and what they're going to do in the future. Even we had an undergraduate student and she was thrilled with it and she is so excited about her future holds. We're thrilled to see it. And Michelle is an administrator and an awesome clarinetist. And if you had to give one advice to anyone considering administration who still wants to perform, what would it, what would it be? Just go for it. You go can, for it. You can make it happen, and it's all a balancing act, and I'm sure you'll do it, and you'll do just fine. Awesome! Well, we're here at Dockery Farms, so now we're going to go eat some food. Bye! Good morning. Oh, she's got a hammer and everything. I'm going to open this meeting officially. Yay! Woo! membership meeting. Welcome, everyone. So, the first thing we're going to do is welcome, welcome, welcome. Is we're going to have the approval of the meeting from the previous meeting. Hi everyone, I'm here with the fabulous Karen Forshine, who is the chair of the Department of Music at Delta State University. She's also a fabulous pianist, performing musician, and she's the conference host for our CMS, Southern Regional Conference 2022, and she has done a wonderful job. Uh, how do you feel about the conference, Karen? I think it's been fabulous. It's been an honor to host, and thank you for including us in this. It's been great. Great weekend. Really uh, best host ever, Delta State. And just since Karen is a concert pianist, as well as being a fabulous department chair, what would you say to anyone considering being an administrator as well as a performing artist? Um, you will need to schedule your time. You know that, right? <laughs> be, be very uh, strict about having have some placement uh, on your time. Uh, define where, what you will do when. Because the biggest challenge would be that you never know what you're going to encounter any given day as an administrator. And you may have your day planned out and things may take off in a different direction. So uh, you do need to put parameters in place so that you can actually practice and get everything uh, that you need to do personally accomplished along with meeting the needs of the job. But it's a, it's a fun and demanding thing to do to be an administrator. Don't you think so? I think so. It's fun, demanding, and it's exciting because yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Ne never, <laughs> never. never. It's kind of like a performance, right? right. Like a live performance. That's exactly. Exactly. Is. Thinking on your feet. Thinking on your feet. So guys, if you're a performer, you already know how to do that. So do consider administration. We need good administrators, just like we need good conference hosts like Karen here. Thank you so much. And we're going to get back to the conference now. Bye. Bye. So right now, I'm about to perform the Florence Price pieces. Um, so we had just a little rehearsal, and we had another rehearsal yesterday, and everything is going well. I'm very nervous. I get very nervous about a company. So yeah, see how it goes. Good morning. This is our 10.35 now session. I'm sorry, five minutes late. Uh, but we're going to be here for five minutes. Uh, and then my so uh, I'd like to welcome our presenters this morning. We have uh, Dr. Cynthia Self from uh, San Diego University, uh, the soprano, and Dr. Gia Montecova 
from uh, the University of Women, who is a uh, pianist. And uh, Dr. Klopp is a uh, professor of voice, uh, Sam Liam, Dr. Klopp's program professor and chair of the music department at the uh, University of Women. And the director of the International Music Biography Festival is going to take place two weeks in Columbus. So if you're not doing anything that weekend, please feel free to come join us. And without further ado, uh, let's welcome our presenters.
here with Cynthia Silf and we just performed the Florence Price songs and um, how do we think we went? It went? I thought it went well. I enjoyed very much performing with you. I did too. Awesome. I thought Thank the you. ensemble was was good and 
Um, you know, I probably played some wrong notes, but I think overall it went as well as it could be expected. So we're very happy with it. Yes. I'm going to show you some, some recordings, beautiful music. We hope everybody explores Florence Price and particularly these songs. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. <laughs> Hello, we are here with the composer Olga Harris, who is also my mother. So tell us, what did you like about the conference? What did you think about it? Uh, I like presentation, I like concert, and I like atmosphere, I like uh, friendly people. My music was performed excellent, so I think it is the best musical organization which exists in this country. Everybody <laughs> should join the College Music Society. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon.